Okay, so when this movie was announced, I was really excited. But one thing I wanted to see, even though this is the core of the Fast and Furious franchise, I wanted to see it get away from this. There's always room for family. And this. You don't turn your back on family. And this. Your brother never told you never threaten a man's family. And this. I don't have friends. I got family. And this. But what's real is family. Your family. We are good. Sorry, don't know how that one got in there. Almost killed my family. But then I saw the second trailer for Hobbs and Shaw and, well... It's my sister. Family business. This whole thing sounds really dodgy. Look after your sister. Listen, I'll handle it. You need to get off the grid. Where? Home. My baby's come home. I'm sorry to bring trouble here, Mama, but I need my brothers. This family is going to war. At least it kept that aspect of Fast and Furious. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new Talkin' Movies. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds, and today we're going to be talking about the Fast and Furious spinoff, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, I will warn you, there might be a few spoilers in this, because there's some things I do want to talk about that aren't in the movie, but I won't spoil everything. That being said, I think you know what you're going to get when you see this movie, at least mostly what you're going to get. Uh, first off, what this movie is about is there is this virus that MI6 is going after, and one of the agents uh, has to inject herself with this virus to get it away from the bad guy. Uh, she is... Uh, painted to be a traitor because the bad guy killed all of her partners and they are saying she did it so she's on the run uh, Luke Hobbs is called in to track her down uh, and then uh, also Deckard Shaw is called in to track her down and the reason that Luke Hobbs is brought in to track her down is because well he's really good at saving the world I mean just ask him uh, and the reason that Deckard Shaw is, be, is being brought in is because the MI6 agent is his sister. Uh, so Luke Hobbs and Deckard Shaw have to form an unlikely alliance uh, to stop this uh, evil organization led by a uh, cyber genetically enhanced Idris Elba uh, from basically uh, taking the world hostage. Um, okay. So this movie, when I first heard about it, I was really, really excited. And because, I mean, think about it. In Fate of the Furious, the best parts were when Jason Statham and The Rock got together. And then, of course, the other best parts was where uh, Jason Statham saves a baby. But the best, really the best parts is when those two got together. So when I heard there was going to be a spinoff with them two, it's like, fantastic. And then you attach... Uh, Deadpool 2 director David Leach. I was down. Um, and the first trailer I really liked. I was really excited. Um, but then I saw the second trailer. And I'm not saying it made me less excited. But it made me wonder what kind of movie we were going to get. Uh, tonally, Hobbs and Shaw. Even though it still does feel like a Fast and Furious movie. With the action and... Uh, Though I've, I've heard some people complain, well, there's not enough cars and stuff in it. Um, there's there's enough. Um, but when it comes to the action and stuff like that, how absurd some of the action is, it definitely fits in the Fast and Furious uh, universe. But, okay, where the Fast and Furious movies, at least uh, starting at part four anyway. Um, okay, the Fast and Furious movies always were silly. I mean, even from the beginning, they were silly. But 
they took themselves seriously enough that you're just like, okay, well, they're taking it seriously, so I guess I'll play along. What Hobbs and Shaw does is it goes from the the silliness being taken seriously to just plain silly. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I am not saying that I did not have a darn good time watching this movie. It just, it's totally different. It, it doesn't... While it does feel like it fits in the universe, it's it's like a puzzle piece that almost fits, and it's just got kind of a few corners sticking up. Um, I'm not sure what I prefer. I think I might have preferred it being just a little less silly. Um, that being said, I still had a darn good time because uh, The Rock and Jason Statham are really fun together, and just them quipping back and forth. They always seem to have the perfect jokes. Um, almost too perfect. Sometimes the, the jokes come, you know, in, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth that it didn't feel like any ad libbing. It was definitely very scripted and there was almost too much of it, but I still had a darn good time because I like both these actors and I liked them together and, and they're fun and, and they had a lot of fun. So, I had nothing wrong with their partnership and the way they acted on screen. It's still probably the best part of the movie. Um, Now, Idris Elba, I'm not going to say put on a bad performance or anything. He was serviceable as the villain. I, okay, the, the, the movies have gone, they've gotten more and more ridiculous, especially when it comes to technology uh, as they've gone along. And, uh, Idris Elba's character of Brixton, uh, who used to, uh, work with Shaw. Um, so there's that connection there. He's been cybernetically enhanced. He's got all sorts of, of robot parts, basically. He's basically a Terminator, uh, but not like full Terminator. He's like maybe a half and half Terminator, uh, because he's got, uh, he can do specs with with things that are in his eyes and he can look at someone and see how hard they're going to punch and and things like that and his spine has been fixed and so he's just he's basically a superman right uh, and they even make a joke the whole black superman joke um from what i understand it was supposed to be a james bond joke and that got nixed um but yeah so He's fine, though. I'm not going to say he's a bad villain. He's just, there's nothing overly interesting about his character. It's just, he's a, he's just an awesome bad guy. You know, he's, he's there to be able to take on two guys, uh, two very talented guys, uh, when it comes to fighting. Um, cause of course, you know that one of the plots of this movie is going to be Hobbs and Shaw need to learn to work together so they can stop the bad guy from taking over the world. Well, it also plays into neither of them can take on Brixton by themselves. They have to work together. So uh, while one's getting punched by Brixton, the other one can get a shot in on him and things like that. And that's how they you know, finally get the better of him. So... Uh, he's a serviceable bad guy. Um, there's also a hidden villain uh, who just talks over uh, a voice changer over a computer. Um, I really thought that they were going to uh, tell us who this villain was. Um, even though there's no clues or anything, I have uh, two hunches. Uh, first, I thought it could have been Charlie Theron's character. Um and I thought maybe in the after credit scene, which by the way, there is all sorts of mid credit scene stuff and there's an after credit scene. Um, I thought it might be, uh, Charlie Theron's character. And then that would connect the movies again. But I think they're trying to keep these separate now from fast and furious. I don't expect, uh, Hobbs and Shaw to show up in fast nine. I would hope they would try to get them back for 10, but I, I have a feeling they're going to start making their own movies, which I'm totally okay with. Um, the other person, if they were going to connect the, the universes again, um, and this has always been a big sticking point with me with Shaw being a good guy. Uh, I thought it might be Han. Uh, there's been rumors that they were going to bring Han back into the franchise. Han being the crew member of, uh, 
Dominic Toretto's team uh, that was killed by uh, Shaw, technically in the third Fast and Furious movie, Tokyo Drift. Uh, even though you don't find it out till later, uh, before Shaw becomes the villain uh, in the Fast franchise. Uh, I always had a weird spot of them being okay with Shaw being there. It's like, he killed Han. How You would think that would never be forgiven. So what if he helped you? He still killed Han. And so I think with all this uh, genetic stuff and all this robotic stuff and everything else, and especially since they tell you that Brixton's character was killed and basically brought back to life uh, as this Superman, um, why can't they do that for Khan, or, or for Han? So if they did it for... Uh, Han, that would take the the bad stuff that Shaw did away from him in a way. Uh, and you could be a little more forgiving of him uh, being the good guy, even though I'm fine with it anyway. And they kind of play into that in this movie as well, uh, of him saying, I, I've done things I'm not proud of and things like that. So, um, okay, so then they also kind of set up for the future as well. Um, and I'll probably mispronounce her name. Isa Gonzalez, uh, has this group of like spy girls. It's like four or five of them. Um, I have a feeling that they're going to play into the future and they kind of tease that her and Shaw have had a relationship at one point. Um, I think they'll play into the future. They, they were in the movie just for a little bit. They help them with one of the jobs and I could see them, doing more with this group later. They kind of played them up like they're going to be future players in this or that they may even have their own spinoff. Um, I do. Okay. I do love, uh, that Helen Marin got to come back, uh, again as Shaw's mom. Um, she's not in the movie very much. I'd say a total of maybe 10 minutes. That being said, I loved every minute. I, I've mentioned this before. I have a huge crush on Helen Marin. I have, always had a huge crush on Helen Mirren ever since Excalibur. Um, and it has not changed of, with her getting older. I have a huge crush on her and she's on screen and she's phenomenal and she's funny. Um, yeah, I just have a huge crush on her. Uh, so having her in the movie is great. I loved what little bit she was in, but that leads me into one of this movie's problems. Um, and, and this is where I, I am going to get kind of spoilery. Because I have to mention something that Shaw says in the movie to Brixton. <clears throat> so, um, while I think he's talking about Brixton, Shaw at one point says, you made me kill my brother. Well, Shaw has a brother. Owen Shaw, right? But I think he was talking about Brixton because they kept saying, you know, they were like, they were like in the military together. So it was you know, you're my brother, you're my brother. And I think he said, you made me kill my brother. Him saying, you made me kill you. Because I think not having Owen Shaw even mentioned in this movie is strange. Um, because this, as I did, as I mentioned in the intro, the movie is still about family. It still keeps that, that family uh, plot thing going, the plot thread going, the, the tone going of, you know, it's all about family. I mean, heck we deal with the rocks characters, family and Shaw's family in this. So we got two family stories going on and, uh, with Vanessa Kirby playing Shaw's sister, uh, who's the MI6 agent, as I mentioned, um, you know, Helen Mirren makes a comment. I want to see you two together. Well, what about Owen? Um, I think if he was, if, if Shaw was referring to Owen, uh, having saying I had to kill Owen, there's a story to tell him. Maybe that will be addressed. If that is a thing, maybe that will be addressed in another one of these movies. But I think he was still talking about Brixton. So, but if that's the case, where's Owen Shaw? Well, maybe, you know, they couldn't get, maybe he was filming another movie. I don't know. Um, but just not having him there, even if he would have showed up at the end, uh, like he did in Fate of the Furious. If, if Luke Evans could have showed up for just even a few scenes in this movie, even, even at the very end, if he showed up with 
uh, with Sean and his sister to visit mom, that would have been a cool moment. I mean, maybe he was doing something else at the time. I don't know. But the fact that he d- they don't mention him unless, again, that's what Shaw was talking about when he said, you made me kill my brother, which I don't think that's the case. I don't think they would have let that slide. Um, I think they would have they would have built on that if that were the thing maybe shown even a flashback um i i don't know which way they're going with that so maybe we just got to wait and see uh in another one of these movies which of course there probably will be one because i'm sure it's going to make bank um when it comes to hobbs I thought his family story was fine. It's basically, well, I I haven't been back to Samoa in 25 years, and my daughter uh, doesn't know her family, you know, doesn't know all her her grandma and aunts and uncles and stuff. Um, So that stuff was fine. And even though in the trailer the the tribal stuff is kind of silly, it's like, how are these guys wearing this this tribal gear going to take on a bunch of guys with guns. Well, they actually explain it in this movie and it makes sense in the movie's universe anyway. Uh, so, and they, and they do kind of set it up, uh, because it has something to do with, um, the weapons being connected to like this master system, uh, where they won't work if the system won't let them work. So it, it plays into that to where, well, they, they find a way to take advantage of, well, we have the strength. They And if they don't have their guns, we have an advantage. So they do address it. And it, and it works. It's it's pretty cool. I, I actually enjoyed that part. Um, and a lot of people are probably wondering about uh, Roman Reigns. Um, okay. Uh, first, I love that The Rock said it wasn't nepotism that he's in this movie. Yeah, okay. Um it's fine. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere WWE is a producer on this movie and they're just not mentioning it. Um, but here's the thing. He doesn't have any lines. Um, unless you count, uh, a grunt when in the trailer where they show him throwing those big hooks, uh, and, or unless you count the, ooh, ah, that he does before he spears somebody, uh, in the ring. Uh, that being said, he spears somebody first and then does the ooh ah. Um, and then he gives someone a Samoan drop. I'm, I'm honestly surprised there wasn't a Superman punch. Maybe it's it's on the cutting room floor. Um, but yeah, he's, he's really a glorified extra. Um, but overall, that whole story arc is fine. Um, and again, it plays into the whole family thing. And at least with this family stuff, I enjoy the story of Hobbs and Shaw. So the family stuff doesn't get as annoying as it does in the uh, Fast and Furious main franchise because I just get tired of uh, it's it's like we 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 get it Dominic we get it Dom it's about family we get it Dom it's about family yes Dom we know it's about family it just gets kind of old um, but I know it's the overall theme and that's fine um, one last thing about characters and things and I'm not going to spoil this. Uh, given that the director is David Leach, um, that warranted him a pretty good casting choice, uh, because it's like who you know kind of thing. I wouldn't call it a cameo. If it is, it's a very extended cameo. This character is a character, um, and he's sprinkled throughout the movie and, I, I enjoyed it. It was maybe a little too much. Uh, it, it added a little too much to the silliness, but it was. I was fine with it because I really enjoy this actor. And then uh, being friends with The Rock uh, can get you in a movie because there is another cameo slash probably future character uh, in this spinoff franchise um, that's connected to The Rock. Uh, and they just kind of show up. It's just kind of surprising when they show up. And now if you go to IMDb, they are on there uh, in the uncredited section for this movie. So if you don't want to spoil it, don't go there. Um, 
But there is those two, I would call them extended cameos slash possible future characters uh, in the franchise. But it, for the most part, I enjoyed both of them. Um, one of them, one of the cameos is smaller than the other one. Uh, and one of them is mouthier than the other one. Uh, and that's kind of a surprise given that they both kind of got mouths on them. But anyway, um, all in all, in the end, again, while this was a little sillier than the main franchise, and I know it's hard to say because Fast and Furious is kind of silly on its own, even though it's a little sillier, it's still enjoyable because you like the characters. Hobbs and Shaw, The Rock and Statham work really well together. Again, Idris Elba is a serviceable villain. Uh, I liked Vanessa Kirby as the sister. Um... And I will also mention that they tease a romance between Hobbs and the sister, um, but then they don't really they don't really finalize it. Um, they they set up this thing. Well, it's like, well, if we make it, maybe we'll watch the sunrise tomorrow um, before the final battle. And but then there's no payoff to that. And of course, maybe that's being saved for for future uh, movies. So I'm, I'm fine with that if that's the case. Um, I like that they set up some possible characters for future, uh, for the future, whether it be the quote-unquote extended cameos or uh, Isaac Gonzalez's group. Um, again, Elba wasn't... It's not his fault. He was just kind of a generic villain. But I like what they're doing with this. If, if you can get over the the different feel of it again it still feels like a fast and furious movie but it's definitely a lot sillier if you can if you can get over that i still think you will have a good time with this movie i enjoyed the movie despite it being a little overly silly i still like the characters and i still like the story that was being told even though it was pretty predictable as well that is going to be all for this edition of talking movies if you like what you've heard here please subscribe to the real gino youtube channel like this video and you have anything to say about hobbs and shaw or any of the other fast and furious movies please feel free to leave a comment in the section below until next time i'm your host the real gino gino reynolds family